Okay, today we are looking at the Victrola 8-in-1 Nostalgic Entertainment Center, the model VTA 600B. This actually comes in the white you see here, which I haven't seen much before. And it also comes in a wood grain. And it's called the 8-in-1. I'm not sure exactly what 8 features are considered the 8-in-1. I couldn't really find that anywhere. It has a turntable on the top. Turntable is 3 speeds, 45, 33, and 78. So 45 for your singles, 33 for the LPs, and 78 for those old-fashioned, thicker records. Uh, so that's number one, turntable. you got a CD player. You've got a cassette player. You've got a cassette player not a cassette recorder it's a cassette player only and it has a feature called auto stop does not have auto reverse which is what you saw in most tape players in the age of tape players it was a common feature so the cassette would flip over and play the other side that is not included here and then you also have number four a radio an am fm radio You've also got a Bluetooth connectivity that we're going to try out. I haven't tested that yet. You've also got a USB encoding, so you are able to take your favorite records and make them into digital files onto a USB drive. And then on the back, there's an auxiliary in input where you can actually connect through a cable, through the right cable with RCA inputs. You can connect your phone or your your tablet or your whatever you'd like to whatever media source you'd like to i've already got a cd in here so the eject button is over there I just pop it out so we'll put it back in and then we're going to push play which is right here play and pause are right here and see if we push play it won't work because i hit the cd slash usb button that is lit now and I think it's easy to hit that and see no USB. And in fact, you've toggled to USB and don't have a USB thumb drive inserted. So you've got to make sure to hit the CD USB button until you see CD if you want to play the CD player. So make sure you hit the CD button. So what you want to do is hit back to CD. See that? It toggles. This button will toggle you from USB which we'll get into in a little bit, to CD. Here's your play. So we've inputted the CD. That's a burned CD. And we're going to hit play. Now this, this volume button is kind of strange. It goes... It just keeps going around until it hits until it's hit its highest mark. It doesn't stop. I'm used to used to volume dials stopping, but it does not do that. But you can see the range, you know, and you can get it up pretty high. Radio actually goes higher. I burned these CDs. I maxed out the volume. So I made sure that the levels on the waveforms were all the way up at the top where they should be. So that's not the issue. But I think it's loud enough. I'm in a Pretty big room right now, and I'd say everybody could enjoy this music in the room at that level. So we hit forward right there. Takes a little second to get started. It's another kind of music. There we go. See, it takes a little second to start. It's all right. And then one more. So there's Rachmaninoff. And uh, again, pause and play. Real basic stuff. And fast forward. And then stop the whole thing. And also, while I'm making this, I see that there's an auxiliary in. I mentioned that there's an RCA in in the back. You also have an auxiliary in in the front if you want to just go ahead and use not RCAs, but your own phone cable, a little, little small cable to go right into the front. You can do that. We do have delete, repeat, program, and shuffle, and record. 
all on the front there. So you don't really need the remote. That's pretty good. Listening to a vinyl record. Let's do that one. So obviously for vinyl, we're going to go to phono. And I've got a few different options for us to listen to. Bootleg record. Some kind of house house music from the early 2000s. This is a motivational Vicente Fernandez. Another piece of house music. Songs and sermons from Bakersfield. But my old standby is this one. The Tijuana border. El Claude. El Claude. So we'll try that one first. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and open up our turntable. There's a little locking arm there. Locking support. Careful not to pinch your finger when opening or closing, so make sure of that. Now, we're going to select Phono. That's going to be the new sound source. Here's the turntable. I believe this turntable has not been played. Look at that. The plastic guard is still on it. Now, over here, right over here, it actually comes with a 45 adapter. So you don't have to go out and buy that. There it goes. It just kind of pulls off. That's our 45 adapter. There's our 45. And then we're going to go ahead and select the speed over here. It looks like we go from 33 and a third to 45 to 78. So this one will be a 45. Okay, so here's the full instructions we're going to run through right now. Press the phono selector button, which we've done. We've placed our vinyl record on the turntable. We're going to lift the tone arm, bring it over. You can lift it with, you can lift it. There's a little thing to hold the tone arm in place. You obviously want to undo that. There's a tone arm lifter. I used to just drag them over, but there's a tone arm lifter. That's the way to do it. And then we're going to slide it across. Look at that. It starts spinning. And then we're going to get to that early cue section where there's no music. And then we'll set it. Whoop, I screwed it up. There we go. There it is. They say don't go to Tijuana. You're not looking for a fight. All right, there's the 45. Let's see what happens when it gets to the end. Okay, see that? When the record reaches its end, the tone arm and rotation stop. Lift the tone arm and place the tone arm rest manually. So it doesn't automatically come back for you. So we'll drag it back. Try a 33. Three and a third. Again, we're going to want to adjust this little button over here. Bring it to 33 and a third. That's clicking it all the way this way. 45 for singles is in the middle. I don't have any 78s to show you, but that would be all the way down. We got it on 33. Let's see how loud it can get. Right, head of the teacher and the other children. Ooh, it gets really loud. Light the fire in the old barrel. Really kicks out the sound. On this morning, however. You know, it's it's maybe lacking a little bit in the high frequency department by the way i want to say that the way this is all being recorded is with two sm58 microphones so not my phone mic like i used to use these are actually going into an audio recorder so you are getting a real good feeling of the music you are getting a real good feeling of what it sounds like because I'm using these SM58 Shure microphones which are the ubiquitous standard that you see on stages and okay so if you do want to happen to program the CD I think most people will just want to shuffle the CD by hitting this and as you see the shuffle comes up and as you begin to play it's going to uh, just shuffle through the songs you see that it's selecting songs randomly three two I've only got five tracks on here so uh, there's not a lot for it to do but that's shuffle I think shuffle is your most popular option and the second one being repeat you have the option if you hit repeat once to repeat whatever track you're on you hit repeat again 
and you can retreat, repeat the whole CD. Program is a weird one. So first of all, you want to stop everything before you hit program. You can hit program, and the first number that comes up when the program light is flashing is going to allow you to select what you want the first track in the program to be. And just for the sake of showing how this works, I'm going to forward ahead to the last track, which is only track number five, and to begin things, we'll hit that one. By hitting program, I'm moving on to what I want the second track to play. So we've got the first track to play now, and I'm going to hit program again, and now it says, what would you like the second track to be? So again, for the sake of demonstration, let's have it be the track right before track number five, track number four. And we'll just do two songs for that. So we're going to hit play now that we've done our program, and as you see, Track number five came up right away. And there it is playing. Now I'm going to forward so that we can see what's... We can see the end here. I think this is about a minute long, this track. And you'll, you get to see the fast-forward function there. And we'll keep it right around here. And you see it's fading out. So we'll see if the next track that comes up it should be track number four. And it is right there. That's track number four. Now, if you want to get rid of the program, and actually you kind of have no choice unless you just never touch the CD player again, you hit either stop according to the manual and then stop again. So you hit stop twice. The other thing you can do is you check the CD or you can turn the thing off. And that will get rid of it. So in other words, your program will not be stored. You can't store a bank of programs either. You're just going to do that one time. I think most people will be happy with repeat, either one track or the whole thing, the whole CD, or shuffle. Fill in a CD with 15 or 20 songs and just hearing it uh, shuffle around. That's probably going to be the most popular option. You can also burn yourself a uh, mp3 data disc if you'd like to uh, you will see it's reading right now the data data cd and it takes a little time to do that you'll see that there's folder one folder two but when you go into that folder it doesn't seem to adhere to any of the folder directories or anything i would just stick to one cd being a certain genre and not even bother with folders unless i'm missing something so now we're going to give the radio a shot you just find the am fm right here but it heightens the pre-existing tensions. All right. Can you speak to our kids? That is... Our kids tell you. This sounds is like your, FM. This is your generation created this. Yeah, you can tell it's FM because the stereo. <laughs> Keep it on the audio there. And then, of course, if you want to go over to AM, you just hit it again. Uh-huh. But so do... It actually... Uh, I will say it has it has it has pretty. Uh, oh, that's good. She's talking. So there's a radio station on the FM, the AM. You heard that. It's pretty basic, uh, and it does have good reception for radio. Point is, as you heard there, just for a brief moment, FM and AM work really great. This is a great way to also have an AM radio station or an FM radio station available. That part's working nice. What we're gonna do now is see how we can use Bluetooth. I'm gonna turn it on. You don't have to do that, I had it turned off. Auxiliary, hit that. First option will give you auxiliary, just like we saw with using either the back RCA inputs or the front auxiliary in right here. Toggle it one more time and you get Bluetooth. And you hear that sound, it came on. So this is the button that you toggle to get Bluetooth. And now we're ready for Bluetooth. Here's my phone, and I'm going to go ahead and pair, th pair it up. So we're going to go over to Connected Devices, if you can see that. It's kind of hard to see. And we're going to uh, pair a new device. And it's looking for the available devices, if you can see that at all. It's very hard to see with this uh, recording. Okay, so what's come up, if you can read that, is Wooden Music Center. I think just wooden because it's made out of wood. It's pairing right now. And there, it's paired. So now we're ready to play music on our phone. And we got the same music loaded onto the phone. And it's playing from the phone right now to the device. And one thing I noticed in doing this is 
you can get a lot more volume somehow out of the Bluetooth. And it's clearer. Or it feels clearer. Nice and loud. Nice and loud. On Bluetooth, you're just going to play. You're going to be doing all of your playing and selecting and all of that kind of stuff from whatever the phone or the device you have offers you for doing that. You do get the wireless connectivity. That's your Bluetooth option. Another option you have is playing from a USB drive. And this is a funny one. The uh, casing has come off it, so please ignore all that. But it's just like any other USB drive that you might have. One thing I did again is I moved from CD. Use this select button to keep yourself from move or to move yourself from CD to USB. So you have it on CD when you want to play a disc obviously you move it to USB when you want to play your USB thumb drive. Stick it in. I also noticed I went through the same thing here and I noticed that it doesn't keep track of the directories. You know, it doesn't keep track of any folders in spite of what it says here. My experience is that give up on that. Just have a USB of songs. And you toggle through in the front. Okay, so that's USB thumb drive. Around the side, on the right side of the unit, is a cassette player option let's check it out so we're going to stick this in kind of goes up it's got a real funny way of getting in there and uh, i'm going to select tape in the last week the band has played concerts in Coggin, Cedar Falls. and there it is to fast forward you go like that you just depress it very basic CD player. Uh, reminds me of something you'd find in a very inexpensive car in the early 1980s, maybe. But it does the job. You can listen to it fast forward. Probably not good for your tape. But you do have the tape option. No auto reverse, so you're going to want to turn it over to hear the other side. Okay, moving right along with our manual, you see the USB recording function. As it reads, if recording to USB, it will be in the format of MP3. If it's coming from the auxiliary source, so you can actually record from auxiliary, you can record from Bluetooth as well, uh, and you can record from cassette, you can make your cassettes digital, and we can record from record. It also records recording from CD. As you see, first insert a USB memory stick, which we've done. So let's start out with record. That'll be phono. When that happens, we're going to press record and start recording. It looks like it's as simple as that. And when we're done, we're going to press stop. That's what's going to happen. So I want to record this record. I'm going to record the B-side. I don't think I've ever listened to the B-side of this old record. Again, we're putting our 45 there. We were on uh, 33, so let's switch it back to 45, as I'm doing. Make sure it's on there. Now we're going to go ahead over here. We're going to select Phono. That's going to be the new sound source. And we're going to get our record up and running. And then I'm going to hit Record. All right, there's the other side. All right, we got about 30 seconds or so in there. Let's lift it up. Then we're gonna, we got that on our USB stick. Let's do another source. Let's try a cassette. Let's hit that in there. I'm gonna move it to tape. Oh yeah, you have to push stop. That's what it is. So we have to push stop, as you saw there, for the recording to actually end. We're going to go ahead now and do tape. I've moved from phono over to cassette. We're going to hit record. There 
it looks like it's recording. That little light is flashing. It says r record right over on the left side. It says it's recording. Okay, so we got some of that. I'm going to hit stop. Recording is over from cassette. And then we'll do one final one here. Oh, you know what I didn't do? We've got to push stop. Okay, so we got to select CD. We're going to go over to CD now. We are going to let the CD load. Let the CD be seen. All right. And then we're going to hit record. And now it's going to ask you, do you want to record one track or do you want to record them all? Let's just record one. And then you hit record and it gets ready at the beginning of that track. And it takes a second or two and it's going to start recording. So, it should be recording this. Now, let's go over to USB and play what we've got. We have three tracks. That's the first one. That's the record. Recorded that really nice. That was from the cassette. All right, so we made it. There's the Victrola 8-in-1 Nostalgic Entertainment Center. Uh, comes in wood or in this, this white. It's a really cool little device for getting some music in a space, a kitchen, uh, any kind of room, maybe the patio or something like that, and just yeah, having in some nice background music. And that's what it's good for, I think, primarily, but it's actually also really good for recording your records and your cassettes and making them digital so you can uh, put them on your computer or your devices or burn CDs with them, do whatever. So it's got a lot of functionality to it and that's why it's probably pretty popular. Mm -hmm.